The more I think about it, Optimus Prime really is the type of character who will brutally massacre his enemies in the most visceral way possible and then give the most uplifting and motivational speech you have ever heard. Boy, that never gets old. <laughs> So Transformers Rise of the Beast is the seventh installment into the Transformers franchise and the sequel to the 2018 surprising hit Bumblebee. The film is directed by Stephen Capel Jr. and it stars Anthony Ramos, Dominique Fishback, Pete Davidson, Peter Cullen, and Ron Perlman. So the story takes place in 1994, a few years after the events of Bumblebee. When a new threat capable of destroying entire planets emerges, the Autobots must team up with the Maximals to save the planet Earth. With this being a Transformers movie, obviously there's going to be a lot of action in here, and I must say the action in this movie completely delivers. The action sequences in this movie were very well choreographed and very well directed. Like every action scene in this movie had some memorable part of it. Like there are some very impressive shots that I peeped in this movie. I don't think there was one scene in which there was any sort of choppy editing or there wasn't a scene in which like there were 12 different takes used just to form one action sequence. No, a lot of these action scenes were very well fleshed out and I appreciate the director for doing that. For example, when the Autobots and the Maximals are fighting against the Decepticons on the battlefield within the third act, the camera just follows every single action going on on that battlefield and it all just looked beautiful. One moment the camera will cut close on a Maximal and then it'll follow an Autobot and then back to a Maximal and then back to the Autobot. Like, it just looked so well choreographed and I appreciate that. It that look, that was amazing. What's funny is that there are explosions in this movie, but they don't come across as over the top compared to like Michael Bay movies, because we all, we all know that guy, he, he's gotta be some sort of arsonist, because that guy loves explosions. I really like the Maximals in this movie. I thought they were awesome. I do wish we kind of got to spend more time with them, but when they were on screen, they were all just epic. Like, <laughs> the voice acting was great. Like, their contribution to this story was just awesome, and they were just badass. I loved every last one of them. I do feel a couple of the Maximals got push to the side compared to the other ones but as far as the maximals go i thought they were all great but i really enjoy optimus primal the most i thought he was badass and i just really loved his character casting pete davidson as mirage was something that i never thought that i really needed nor wanted but i am very happy that we got it pete davidson as mirage was charming his comedic timing was on point and i really loved his dynamic with noah like i just liked it the chemistry between those two was surprisingly heartfelt. I would argue that the dynamic between those two was kind of the heart and soul of the movie. Like, you see how they both grow this bond with one another throughout the entire film and how much they love and care for each other. And it's, again, surprisingly heartfelt, and I appreciated it. One thing this movie does that I gotta admit, it really surprised me, it gave us a reason to care about the humans. Like, Noah and Elena, I like them. I, th I like them. Compared to Sam Wibicky and... What was her name again? Michaela. Michaela, yes. I prefer Noah and Elena compared to Sam and Michaela. Listen, I love Shia LaBeouf and Sam Witwicky, but if you really think about it, all he really did was scream throughout the entire franchise, or at least within the first three movies, because he's not in four and five. Regardless, I prefer Noah and Elena. Here's the thing, Noah and Elena actually contribute to the story in a way, like they actually had something to do, you know? It's not like they were just sitting there just to get in the way. They weren't like, you know, freaking NPCs or nothing. No, they actually played somewhat of a role in this movie, and that put a smile on my face. Unicron was cool, but I do wish we got to see more of him in action, but regardless, I, I, I I'm satisfied with what we got. I do hope that he does return to future installments. Shout out Coleman Domingo. If there is one thing that I hate about this entire franchise is that they focus more on the humans rather than the Transformers. In here, they kind of do the same thing, but I would argue it wasn't as bad as compared to the predecessors. And also given the fact that the humans in this movie actually played more of a contribution compared to the predecessors, I was fine with it. I was fine with it. I do wish they had focused more on the Transformers rather than the humans in this movie let alone the entire franchise at that. Also, Bumblebee, he's barely in the movie. And when he is in the movie, he doesn't really do anything. He's kind of just there. Now, granted, he does have a pretty badass moment in the final act of the film, but overall, Bumblebee was kind of just there. How do you take such a popular character of your own franchise and push him to the sideline? Like, I, I, I don't understand the logic behind that. Now, when you see the movie, you'll understand why he's not in this movie as often as you would think, but... Even then, I, I, I just didn't like how they treated the character in this movie. That that did not resonate well with me at all. There is a crazy MacGuffin that happens in the final act of the film, which causes Bumblebee's badass entrance. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, 
There is a giant gray area with that MacGuffin there. I'm just gonna say it, the MacGuffin was Light Energon, and you will see how it plays once the final act comes around. I just thought that was way too easy and way too much of a plot convenience. It was just like, okay. And also, if this Light Energon can do that for this character, why couldn't it do it for this character? And it just got me thinking like, how exactly does this work? The CGI is fine for the most part, but there are a few scenes in which I was like, oh, they, they definitely could have brushed that up way better because yikes. And this movie has one of the most bizarre endings I have ever seen for any Transformers movie. When I saw that final scene, I really sat there like, why? It was, so, it felt so random. It's like, who asked for this? You will know it when you see it. In the end, Transformers Rise of the Beast is a flawed but very fun time at the theater, and I do think it's one of the more satisfying entries into the entire franchise. So plugging Transformers Rise of the Beast into the rank system, I'm going to place this one into the pass zone. I still can't get over that final scene. <laughs> But yeah, that is pretty much my review for Transformers Rise of the Beast. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought of Rise of the Beast. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think this is one of the best installments in the franchise? What did you think about that final end scene? Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you all in the next one. After working up the nerve, almost equal in size. I walked around with the iron for any wrinkle in time. I paid a piece of my mind for every nickel and dime. But never less than a five and never slept on a job. A killer trap on your squad, yet never left the garage. When your God was close enough to see the flesh of his eyes. Get to the button and press it's what the message advised. What's the threat behind a message where the testament lies?